Hi everyone, Robot Man here. Today we're going to do one of my most popular challenges. It is called the Wall Bumping Drag Racer. We're going to build a car that travels in a straight line to a wall. When it hits the wall, it's going to know that it's hit the wall and it's going to turn around and come back. We're going to see who can finish over the start line first. Can you do it? Here's some rules and tips. We're in the Spike Prime app and we're going to start a new project and we are going to use the set movement blocks. As usual, we're going to grab a block that says set movement motors because we need to tell the hub where we plug the motors in. And today we're going to plug the motors into C and D for our wall bumping drag racer. So we've told the hub where we plug the motors in and then we have to say how fast we want to go. Now this is something you can experiment with. Again, I don't want you to go higher than 100 because if you go higher than 100%, then it can cause errors. But do you really want to head towards the wall at full pace, 100%? Sometimes when cars go too fast and they hit the wall, they don't come straight back. They go off on a bit of an angle because they hit the wall too hard. So you might want to experiment. I recommend that you try 80 to start with. And if you want to increase it or even decrease it later, you can. After you've set the speed, we're going to tell it to start moving. So when the program starts, it's going to go flat out to the wall. And that'll get us to the wall, but it's not going to get us back. To get us back, we need to go to the events tab here. And because we plugged a force sensor or button into our robot, 
we need to say when the button is pressed, we're going to get it to go backwards. We can leave it in port A if you like, but I'll just change it to B because I always like to plug the button into B. It reminds me where to plug it because button starts with B. So I'm going to plug the force sensor into B and then it's going to start moving. Now, I think we need to get it to start moving just a little bit backwards before it turns around because if it turns around as soon as the button's pressed, it might drag along the wall. So let's go start moving, but we're going to go backwards just a little bit, just a little bit backwards. It needs to be the opposite arrow to this one because when it hits the wall, we're going to go backwards just a little bit. So we're going to go control and choose weight. And a lot of you would know that half is 0 0.5. So I'm going to put 0 0.5 in there. So it's going to, the button's going to get pressed. Then it's going to go backwards for half a second. And then we want it to turn. This is where we want our robot to do a 180 by itself. So a 180 degrees turn means the robot turns 180 degrees. It doesn't mean that the wheels turn 180 degrees. So some people like to choose degrees here, but that, that's just how many degrees the wheels turn around. I think it's good to change these to seconds. And if you want the robot to spin, then you do a right turn of 100% and then it will turn on the spot. Now I've experimented a bit with this and for some of my robots, if I do 0 0.5 of a second for how long it turns for, it'll do a 180. But some of you, it depends how far apart your wheels are and how long your robot is and where you've positioned your motors, you might say 0.7 or in 0.8 or even 1.1 so you need to experiment with this later but to start with maybe leave it at 0.5 and see what happens and then you want it to come back at the moment it's turning so it's hit the wall it's gone backwards a little bit and then it's turned and then you want it to travel all the way back to the start line so you could change this to centimetres or seconds if you like. I recommend seconds because that's kind of easy to get your head around and understand. If you want it to go a bit further, then you can change that. So it depends on how far away your line is and how big your robot is and how close the wheels are together and how fast you've got it going up here. But you might say eight seconds and that might get you back to the start line. You can change this number later. You might make it 8.7 seconds okay nearly nine seconds but you really need to come up with your own number in there how long how many seconds do you want your car to come back for and it's a bit hard to estimate without even experimenting once you need to experiment lots with this so let's just say five seconds there to see how far that goes back so really these numbers here you can experiment with how fast it goes how much it actually turns and how long it travels for at the end. There's a good chance you'll need to change all those numbers, okay? You could make that one second if you wanted to, or less, okay? But that's our code. This block here, this stack will take us to the wall and this one will get us back again. Remember, your whole robot needs to start and finish over the start line, the whole robot. And this is really important. When you change your code, you need to press play or download it to your hub so your hub knows about the changes. It doesn't know about changes unless you download it or play the code. So please download it or play it every time you change it. And when we're racing, remember the line closest to the walls for the robots and the other one is for you to sit behind. You should pause it here so you're reminded of how to code it and the rules. The goal is to find the biggest wall you can. In this particular room, there was a crazy pattern on the floor, but I measured about 10 steps, which turns out to be about three meters. So you want to measure a line about three meters from the wall, and then try and put it down as parallel to the wall as you can, so it's three meters all the way along, and then do another line that's about 50 centimeters apart from the first line. Uh, so it looks a bit like this. So you've got one line close to the wall, that's your start line and it's about 300 centimetres from the wall, or three metres, and then you've got a second line. The first line's for the robots, and the second line is for kids to sit behind. 
you can call that area between the robot line and the wall the racetrack and it's really important to tell the kids not to build their robots inside or on the racetrack because they can get in the way so when they're constructing stay off the racetrack no tubs no lego inside the racetrack area in the description of all my lessons there are some really handy links on how to score if you're interested in scoring like measuring distance or time and also there's some handy uh, sheets for kids to fill out for self-assessments and even teacher assessments so be sure to check out the description for some handy links and also check out some of my other videos on my YouTube channel if you haven't subscribed yet now's the time cheers